Hi guys, I'm Josh. This is the uh, Video Basics uh, Studio Tour. So as the name suggests, we're gonna keep it really basic and um, just teach you some core skills so you can, at the end of this session, do a tour of your studio that looks pretty professional, hopefully. Um, obviously, we're gonna cover a whole bunch of stuff. There's my background, we've got some must-dos, filming, composition, editing, um, extra resources, we're gonna do all sorts of things. I'll try and keep it pretty simple and straightforward. Um, obviously, with film, there's you know no end to technology, there's no end to taking it as far as you want. This is really just the basics. So we're just going to cover off some really simple things that will make a massive difference to your finished video. Okay, a little about me. Um, you heard the background um, that Harry gave. Uh, obviously, uh, movie making is a big part of my life now. Love it. And as you kind of get into it, you learn more and more. And one of the places that I've learned a heap is YouTube. And it's, that's good information for you guys because although I'm gonna cover a whole bunch of stuff in this particular session, YouTube is gonna be your best friend when you start actually trying to film because at the end of this, there'll be some resources, some URLs that you can copy and paste and anything with film, no matter what it is, if you get stuck, go to YouTube and type in, how do I do this thing I can't do right now? And there'll be some guy on there or some girl saying, okay, this is the way I do it, it's not the way everyone does it, and um, they'll take you through step by step. There's so many resources on there, it's really great for this type of thing. Now, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting through this. Here we go, I need to click with my mouse. Okay, so what you need to make your film, it's pretty simple, you need a smartphone. Most of them are fitted with HD movie cameras now, um, and you need access to the internet. Simple as that, that's all you're gonna need. You're also going to need a broom and some blue tack, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Our phone setup. I'm only going to stick to iPhones. I'm sorry for Android users. I'm an iPhone native. I'm sure um, the processes will be similar to Android, but it's just that it'll take too long to go through both types of phones. So we're going to stick to iPhones. Yet again, if you're having trouble, type it into YouTube. I'm sure there'll be some body on there showing you how to do it. So for your phone setup, we want you to use the camera at the back of your phone. This is the best camera to use, it's the highest quality. And also it prevents people kind of looking at themselves as they talk, which is, we don't want that. So if we just look at this, um, hopefully you can see this slide. We've got settings. This is on your phone, go to settings go to camera, and we want to record our video at 1080p, 30 frames per second. Some phones are fitted with 4K video now. Those files are going to be way too large to deal with. Your upload times are going to blow out. It's just going to make your life a lot harder. So if you can set your phones to 1080p, that'll be good. Now, this is, we've called it must-dos, but basically it's the, the basics, the simple tips that if you do this, you're going to get a big difference in your result for when you make your studio tour. So the first, and some of them are pretty obvious, but it's worth kind of restating them because as, as I said, it'll make a big difference. So get someone to film you, sounds obvious, but a lot of people try and film themselves. You know, you get that kind of look of people walking around their room like that, just talking into a camera. If you can get someone to film you, it's going to make it a lot easier. You can focus on what you're talking about, your studio space and your content, your presentations to the camera. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. Um, secondly, and this is such a simple thing to do, but it makes a massive difference, film in widescreen. So people with phones, what they tend to do is use film like they're holding a phone, which is fair enough. It's a phone. So you get a lot of that, um, look where you get, you know, just a little bit of screen there. If you, all you need to do is turn your phone on the side and suddenly you're the same shape as a cinema screen, you're the same shape as a tally, you're the same shape as a YouTube screen. So turn your phone on its side when you film. 
Um, next up is audio. Audio can make a huge difference. I think the, the general rule is that people will notice poor audio way before they notice poor images. And there's, there's a figure there, there's something like 80, 20 or something, 80% audio, 20% film, it's, that's how important it is. So simple rules for getting better audio are talk inside, um, be, sounds obvious, but get out of the wind, go inside, hopefully your studio will be inside, um, <laughs> and um, also have a quiet environment, uh, no, like, people shouting or anything like that, the quieter, your environment can be the better audio you'll have and also it's a bit of a trick because um, you have this kind of payoff with your iPhone so you've got a, a mic in there and the closer that mic gets the better your audio will be but you still want to not have you know you don't want to be mushed up to the camera like that so you're just going to have to try and balance a good position for yourself so you get all nice audio and I mean, if it, you're in a quiet environment, you should be pretty right. It's not going to be professional level. You're not, you know, if you don't have a boom or a mic really close, you will get that airy sound to the audio, but it's, it'll, you know, you'll still end up with something pretty good. Okay, run time, three minutes maximum. Try and keep it short and punchy. People don't have a huge attention span when they get on YouTube. Um, three minutes from my work where a, doing corporate video seems to be for a lot of this type of content a nice short time frame if you can limit to that that'd be great now stabilize your phone this is a massive one and um this is uh getting back to what we were talking about before with um the broomstick and the blue tack now there's a heap of ways you can stabilize cameras you there's gimbals, there's tripod equipment. They're going to cost a lot of money. I think gimbals for iPhones start around $150. Tripods are usually upwards of $200, so it's not cheap. But because iPhones are so cheap, so, so light, you can get a broom, get a piece of blue tack, stick it on the end, get your phone, stick that on the blue tack. It's very low five, but it works. Um, I filmed a demonstration video with Shell uh, a few days ago and we have used that same system. So we used a broom, we used the blue tack, we stuck our phone on the top and we used that as our tripod and it worked really well. You'll see when we play the, um, play the uh, film for you. Uh, next up is, uh, this is a little trick, but keep it level. If you can keep your camera level to the horizon, Simple little trick, but it'll make the footage seem a lot more um, professional instead of that, you know, film noir, crazy angles thing. For documentaries and that type of stuff, level to the horizon is great. Finally, and probably it can be the trickiest thing, but it makes the biggest difference, is lighting. Now, the simple rule is with this type of documentary stuff, have lots of light in front of you. Here I've got a lamp here, I've got another lamp here, so all the light is coming at me this way. It's not great if you're standing in front of a window or something, you're going to be a silhouette. So make sure that your main lighting source is coming, is shining on you, shining on your face, and you don't have bright lights behind you. It's a simple rule, but it'll make a big difference. Oh, here we go. Okay, composition. So I've kind of put together a simple storyboard for this and we're going to use three main shot types. So if you look at me now, that's a medium shot. And you'll see in the slide, we've got room above my head and then we've got, you know, a bit of the chest. And this is where the kind of interplay with audio is a bit of an issue. You're going to be a little bit away from your camera but it's a trade-off, it's a nice even shot. People will be able to see a little bit of your studio and get a good view of you. The next shot is the wide shot. So that's, if I jump out of here, that would be perhaps a poor wide shot of our studio, but you can see in our slide here, 
it shows an entire room, you know, a big space. And then the third shot we're going to use is a close-up. So this is in tight on something specific. So a picture, um, your tools, your paintbrushes, something like that. Okay. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for everyone. I feel like I'm rushing through. I'll try the best. Okay, so we're getting ready to film. Exciting stuff. Movie making time. Uh, so you'll see in picture one, we've got our broom, we've got our blue tack, and we've got our phone. We've stuck them all together. We've selected camera on our phone. We've turned our phone on the side. And we selected video and we're ready to film. So this is our storyboard that we've put together for the studio tour. Um, we've broken it into four basic shots. And in each of those shots, there's um, content that you can use. Now, this, there's a million ways to do this type of thing and a million creative ways. This is a very basic way to do it. If you do it this way, you're going to get a decent result at the end. You can mix it up, you can do what you want. But this is just a very basic way of putting together your studio tour. So I'll take you through it and we'll do our shot, the content as we go. Okay, so first up, it's gonna be your introduction. We'll do this in a medium shot. And yet again, you can see in the picture, we've got that space above the head, bust kind of level shot there. And in this particular shot, you can tell people who you are, um, a little about yourself, your art, where you are, how you set it all up, and how long you've been in this studio. So this is really you kind of the introduction opening of your video. So, hey, my name's Josh. I'm here in my studio in Torquay. I've been here for so many years. You know, it's that type of content. It's uh, a, little bit of a, a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in this particular spot. The next shot we can do, and I guess, sorry, I'll, I'll just backtrack a little. Um, what you'll find is you'll, because you're speaking to camera, it'll take you a few goes. So sometimes it's a good idea just to practice what you're going to say and then do a few takes. So have a practice take, hey, you know, talk about it. Maybe look and see how it turned out, do another take. And you can do it as many times as you want until you get the particular result you like and then move on. So next up is our um, wide shot. And this will show people the studio space. And you can take them through the room, show them around, what do you love about it, talk about your process a little, that type of content, just give them a sense of the space. And now our third shot, and this may be quite a few shots because you're talking about a number of things, these will be close-ups. So you may take a very, like if you, Here's my mouse, you know, that close-up shots of specific things. So this is, um, you know, you may talk about tools, you may talk about specific pieces of art, you may talk about a painting and show the painting really closely and say, and talk about you know, why you love it so much, why you used certain um, painting styles to create it, that type of thing. So it's all the nitty gritty stuff. It's all the little detail that you're going to use and you can do, a number of these types of close-up shots and we can edit them together and we'll get into editing in just a bit. Finally is the wrap-up shot, which again is a medium shot. So you're looking at space above the head again, chest type area up, and this is really you wrapping it up, telling people perhaps a little about maybe where they can find your art, um, where they can find out more about you, websites and that type of thing. And then obviously, which is always good, thank everyone for um, coming along and checking out your studio. So that is a basic storyboard. This um, PowerPoint, I think, will be available to everyone. I think they're recording this meeting anyway, so you'll be able to backtrack and have a look at the, um, the storyboard and take from it what you like. It's a, it's a good basic plan for what you're trying to do, and it's here to help you. Okay, <clears throat> so we filmed our movie. So we've done all our shooting. We've got all our shots. We've stood in front of the camera. We've talked about our studio. We've got a whole bunch of shots in our phone. 
Now, what you'll need to do is editing. Now, editing used to be quite laborious, I guess. Like if you think about in the days of film where people were literally cutting bits of film and pasting them together. And even, you know, I guess a lot of before iPhones, a lot of editing, digital editing programs were out there like Premiere Pro and DaVinci and those types of things. It takes a long time to get up to speed with that type of stuff. What's so great now is there's ed editing programs out there that are very intuitive, very easy to use, and they're all on your phone. So I suggest iMovie. There's other programs for Android and that type of thing. Because we're sticking mainly to um, iPhones, I'll just stick with iMovie and we'll go through how to edit just with that program. So if it's not already loaded onto your iPhone, you can get it easily from the App Store. Go to the App Store, download it, and um, you'll have it on your phone. So, <coughs> pardon me, with editing, the best way to think about it is you're lining up moments in line. You're just putting them in line the way you want them to. So the two main parts of editing that you'll do on iMovie are finding your clips and lining them up in the order you want them. And then the second part of that editing process will be just trimming perhaps the start or the end to get rid of perhaps things you don't particularly like, perhaps you cough too much at the start, you can just trim that out and have it edited just so it's a smooth little package. So there's two parts. There's the ordering, put the clips you want in order from start to finish, and then there's trimming. So if you have a look at iMovie, um, it's, it's pretty intuitive. When you go in there, you've got create project, click on that, select movie, and then it'll take you to a screen where you can um, choose your clips. Now, I found, uh, pardon me, I found the, I hadn't used iMovie at all until the other day because I thought I, I, I use other programs, but it was, um, I thought I should give it a go if I'm going to show you guys how to use it. And I was surprised how easy it is to use. Like it's, if you're used to using a, iPhone for anything else, you'll find it pretty straightforward. But the main thing I found was <clears throat> the best way to do it was to go through your clips one at a time and pull them in one at a time. So the review your clips, find the one you want, so the first one you want, and select that and pull it in, and then keep going. So you'll see here, it's easy to add more clips, and what happens when you add clips, it'll pull it in straight behind the first clip so it's quite easy to order you choose your first clip you want you pull it in choose the next clip you want it'll automatically be pulled in behind that clip you choose the next clip you want and then it'll be automatically pulled in behind that clip so it's quite an easy editing process um, as you can see here there's ways to trim as you go so once you've pulled in the clips yet again so you order them which ones you like the best put them in order from start to finish and then just trim them up so you have them edited nicely, getting rid of any bumpy bits or things you don't want on the screen. The final part with iMovie is adding music. When I was thinking about how to do this, I thought oh, maybe music could be a bit too tricky. And then I was looking through iMovie and it's so easy. I just thought, well, why not add it in? So if you go down to the, the little wheel down the bottom, it automatically brings up a screen where you can choose music that you can use on your video. Music makes a huge difference. Um, it just adds a little bit of flavour in the background, gives it a, some atmosphere and makes it a lot more watchable. It can be quite dry, I guess, just if you think about just listening now you've got a voice and that's all you've got a little bit of music it adds a lot of atmosphere to this type of stuff and makes it um kind of a lot more palatable so it'll make a huge difference give it a go with this program as well what you'll find is you might create a project something goes wrong you can ditch it start again so just have a play around very intuitive as i said play around with it until you get something happening that you like and then take the next step 
Okay, so I'm going to play you an example video. I just need to see if I can get out of here. Yeah, I can. Um, and I need to share different parts. I'm going to do a few things here. Hang on, bear with me while I do crazy stuff. Josh, I'll just ask you a question while you're trying to do crazy things. Yeah, sure. If you wanted, so for example, just say the sound, you know, for whatever reason, sound quality was going to be an issue. Could mm -hmm. you record yourself on, you know, on your microphone, on your phone's microphone, and then pull that in the same way that you would pull in music? You, you can. It's, it's, it, it would complicate the process quite a bit, but you certainly could do that. One thing I would say is if you're going to do that, you couldn't do it separately, so you would need perhaps two iPhones, one to record the sound, one to um, record on your, your video. But when you start, make sure you just have a clap and that'll help you when you edit to match up sure. the, the sound and the, and the video. I would suggest when you see this video, you'll see that the sound is not terrible. Like yeah. you can obviously take sound a long way. To make it easy on yourself, I would suggest not doing separate sound. It, it, it adds a lot of complication. Obviously, if there's people out there with those with skills who uh, feel comfortable doing that, by all means, do it. But um, if you get your cam when you film yourself, if your camera's close enough, the the mics are quite good in iPhones, and you'll get mm. a level of sound. Great. How about I play this video, and um, people can just they'll be able to get a sense of the sound and the quality. Obviously, the um, resolution isn't great because I had to reduce it so I could play over Zoom, but it'll give you a sense of <clears throat> what you can achieve. Um, we did this, I did this with Shell, my wife, uh, a couple of days ago. It took us an hour or so to kind of shoot because we had a few goes because we were kind of figuring it out as we went along. So I'll play that and then we'll return to the presentation. Hi everyone, this is an example video of what your studio tour could look like once you've done the workshop. So my name is Michelle, I'm an illustrator and teacher living in Torquay and I work mainly in watercolours and pencil uh, but I'm also starting to learn how to work digitally on my iPad using Procreate. Okay, so this is my workspace or my studio. Uh, it's in Torquay, in my house. So I set up the studio about three years ago. Now over here I keep all of my uh, materials. This is where I keep all of my paints, uh, mediums for acrylics, inks, more pastels, charcoals, iPad and uh, any technical equipment. This is a basic stationery drawer. It's got my manuscripts, sketches and ideas and all of those for my book. Watercolours, palettes, brushes, pencils. This is my light box that I use for tracing over original sketches. I really love this space because it's very minimal, there's no clutter. I have a really nice view over the creek. I really love this view. It's really peaceful and it's just a really nice space for me to have time to think and draw and paint all the things that I love. Here are a few of the watercolours that are finished. I'll take them into Geelong to a printer where I get them professionally scanned and then I will retouch in Photoshop and then lay out with the text in InDesign. Thank you so much for watching this studio tour. I hope you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more of my work you can go to Instagram michellecon underscore illustration and there's links to my website there. Okay. There we go. That's the example video. I hope that played okay and everyone could see it. Um, so watching that, you get a sense of the shots we did. We did a basic um, medium shot. We did a wide shot with um, Shell walking through the studio. Then we did the close-ups on the various tools and things she used and also some close-ups at the end of her art. And then we did the uh, medium shot again of her um, just wrapping up and telling people what, what where to find out more stuff. You can 
see how much music, how much difference music makes with it. It just gives it a little, a little lift. The audio, again, it's not probably what you describe as professional quality, but it certainly gets the job done. And kind of linking back to Harrod's question, it is a trade-off to do separate audio. There's a lot more involved. And I think probably if you stick to just making sure, getting that trade-off, getting the camera close enough, you, you're going to get decent audio. And even think about when you're doing your close-ups, you can be, you can, as you can film, you can be quite close to the, the phone and talk about your, um, whatever you're going to talk about with those particular shots. And you're going to get decent audio there as well. Okay, the final, the final challenge. We've got our movie, we've filmed it, we've edited it, and now we upload to YouTube. Yet again, with iPhones, it's quite a simple process. If you download um, the YouTube app to your iPhone, it's pretty intuitive. It's gonna take you through it from iMovie. <coughs> There's a little button there. It'll give you the choice of where you're going to send your movie. You just select YouTube, and then it's a matter of Signing in, you'll need a Google account to get onto YouTube. So um, that's a pretty easy process. So make sure you sign up, enter your passwords, and then you'll be taken through to this screen. You'll need to um, give your movie a name, select the resolution, which is uh, HD 1080p, which is what we filmed in. You'll need to make it publicly available, and then you hit share and it'll upload. You can get your link from there. I think um, the process may be that you'll be sending links to the Surf Coast and then they'll be then uploading in their own kind of method to their website as well. So um, that's well, basically it. it, it it's kind of uh, the if you see it as those kind of, if you break it down to kind of your simple process of setting up your camera, uh, filming, then editing, and then uploading, you're good to go. Now, as I said before, there's a heap of resources out there. So if you get stuck, if you, if you find that there's something in iMovie that you can't quite figure out, YouTube is your friend. There will be someone on there telling you how to do it. With these extra resources, the first one here, how to make YouTube videos on your phone, it's two American people, they're quite American. Um, they're pretty upbeat, but they they do a great um, kind of show of taking you very slowly through the whole process. And they cover basically what I've covered here. So lighting, and they go into it actually in quite a bit more depth. I think the video goes for about half an hour or 40 minutes. So you can take this stuff as far as you want. You can be as creative as you want. What this, um, I guess presentation was all about was just giving you the very basic points and I would probably kind of go over just a couple of points again um, <clears throat> and they're quite simple. Try and stabilise your phone and if I was to say anything, stabilise your phone, put it on the broom, put it on the blue tack, lean it against the chair, make sure it doesn't shake. Turn it on its side. If I could tell you two things, I'd tell you those two things. And that those two things in itself will make a massive difference. Third thing is lighting. Try and get the lighting in front of you, not behind you. And um, hopefully you will get to the point where you're getting some good footage. Keep going with it. If, if, you're, if you're struggling, if you try and take some footage and it looks terrible, move some stuff around. Move get some lamps, put them in different spots, stand in a different spot, stand in front of a window, try stuff. The great thing with the whole digital filmmaking deal is that you can do things over and over and over again until you get something that's quite good. And that I would say the same thing with your presentation. So when you're speaking, have a go, try all sorts of stuff. Um, if you're not happy with it, do it again. Perhaps write it down, learn, write a script learn the script and then say that. So there's a million ways to do it. Um, it's just a matter of finding things that work for you. But uh, yeah, those few things, still the basics, turn your camera on its side, put it on a broom, make sure it's stable and that'll make a big difference. Okay, so I think Harriet was going to 
um, <clears throat> find some questions on the chat line. I'm not sure whether. Yeah. So everyone, if you wanted to um, think of some questions in the meantime and um, put them onto the chat function and then I'll read them out for Josh. Josh, while people are thinking of their questions and things, I know that we've got a few artists who are with us this evening who do a fabulous job of making their own videos using time lapse, etc. And I'm just wondering about, you know, how, yeah, can you easily include any time lapse stuff that you might have filmed within that sort of wider frame of the studio tour? You know, can you pull those shots in as well? So yeah, you could have, you know, so, they could be some of your the detail of that three minutes. Yep, um, so most iPhones have a time-lapse setting, uh, so you can use that. That's a great option. It's a great way, say, if you're drawing something, I know Shell's use that to um, film herself painting pictures and that type of thing. And yet again, that's just a matter of filming it, and then when you come to edit, pulling your clips into iMovie, finding the best spot to put it, pulling it in, and then... You know, it's a part of your movie as you go. So all those techniques are there um, and can be easily used. Time lapses on your phone. Give it a go. Make yeah. It. So and I do really encourage everyone. You do have, you know, there's five or six days. I think it is until Josh's tea station. So you can practice some of this stuff beforehand. And if you've got any issues, come to the tea station on Wednesday afternoon at two thirty and and talk, you know, directly to Josh about it. So I'll start going through the questions that we've just pulled in okay. now. Um, Deirdre Carmichael, Deirdre, we will be sending out um, a copy, so the PDF of Josh's presentation and also the video will be available next week. So we'll send through the PDF probably tomorrow um, and then next week that recording will be up. So those links will be there. Um, I've got from Kaz Artsy who is, so that's two of our artists who are going to be doing fun things with us for Portal. Um, Kaz wants to know, Josh, would you still would you use still shots in the lineup of clips? Sure, absolutely. That can work well. There's a there's a technique. Oh, you might not be able to do it on iMovie. Actually, I think you can. A technique called the Ken Burns effect, which was a famous documentary um, technique, where you can pull in your your um, screen, your just your picture, and then the and I actually remember seeing it in the iMovie program you hit Ken Burns effect, I think it may even be called that, and it slowly pans across the picture. As you, if you've ever watched a documentary and you, you see they might use still shots, but they slowly move across the picture and just gives it that movement. But even if you can't do that or you can't figure out how to do it, put them in there. There's, with this type of stuff, there's, there's no real don't or give it a go, see what it looks like, get a feel for it. A lot of it is pacing. Like if you were to use a picture like that, I certainly wouldn't leave it on screen for any longer than, you know, probably with the stuff I do, maybe three or four seconds with an edit like that. But, um, you, yeah, more than welcome to do that. It's a, it's a, it's a, if you, especially if it's kind of a part of what you want to show people. That's the main thing, I guess, if you think about it, if you're telling a story about your studio, try and tell that story in a way that's engaging and if pictures are going to help that then definitely use them great um we've got a question from pat mckenzie who's a very well-known uh, painter here on the coast she says right at the beginning josh you mentioned camera settings can you just quickly repeat that process from the you know the camera settings going through okay so on the iphone you'll go to settings and then it'll take you through to your video and then really all you're doing is selecting 1080 HD. Your camera may already be set to that but um, it's a pretty simple process so you're just going to settings, going through to video and setting that to 1080p 30 frames per second and what that is is um, it's pretty it's standard HD resolution the files won't be too massive to use to be, you know, to become unusable, and it's a, it's the same resolution as HD televisions, so it's a, a really good sharp picture. Yeah, and for everyone who, who sort of doesn't do this, um, this sort of promotional stuff a lot, the size of your images is really important because it will slow down that connectivity and people's ability to upload or to watch your content. And 
you know, we lose people if they have to wait too long. We're not very patient anymore. Um, Ian is asking, I'm going to throw this one out to everyone. So if you wanted to, if you've got a response, um, if you're an Android user, does anyone know of a good Android app similar to iMovie? So if you wanted to, um, if you've got, if you know of one, please click that back into the chat section and we'll, we'll pass that on to Ian. Um, I've got a few people just saying that they feel... Sorry, I wrote one down, actually. Oh, good on you. I'll just, I've got a, I, I'm terrible. I use lots of bits of paper. So. Old school. Yes, yeah. we do too. While Josh is looking for his paper, I've got a few people, Josh, saying that they feel a lot less overwhelmed by the idea of creating a video now. And I'm going to jump in here and say, I reckon Bounty. like every... Yeah, so what was that Android so app? The, was it for... Yeah, so free editing. It's a free editing app. It's called InShot. I-N-S-H-O-T. And I... InShot, Ian. I'm going to put that back. All one word. Yeah, and it's downloadable, it's free, and, um, yeah, I think you find it in the App Store. Okay, going back to, uh, it's, oof, they spin through so much. Oh, um, I think I just sent that to Cinnamon when I meant to send it directly to everyone, so that was in shot, everyone. Okay, uh, Renee has said that she doesn't know this, if it's an Android, but she has played with and these messages move on me so I can't see them. I don't know if this is Android, but she's played with Splice before and it's quite straightforward. So that's fab. Okay, yeah. Um, I also want to encourage everyone. Ah, Elise Roberts, who's the coordinator of Art Space, is asking, can you use an iPad to film or is an iPhone preferred? Um, Shell's got an iPad and I'm pretty sure it has a camera on the back. You'd have to check if it has a camera. I'm, I'm guessing it definitely would. Yeah, I think it do. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? Do, 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 I, I think I'm at, if I've missed your question, uh, okay, Karen Will Zara, do you recommend fading in or out or other effects, Josh? Um, that's a good question. Yet again, it's really up to you guys how you want to do it. Generally, hard edits. Um, you'll notice on the film I did with Shell, I used a few fade in and fade outs. And then if I did a few different things, actually, which is quite surprising. Generally, I do hard edits with everything else I do. Um, but it's just, it's really a matter of taste. The good thing about that iMovie program is it gives you quite a short fade in, fade out time between edits, which is probably key. If you're fading in and fading out and doing it quite slowly, it would seem strange. So, um, yeah, just use the, if you're going to do it, just use the standard fade in fade out option that they've got on there and um it should work fine and i would really like to encourage everyone you know you've got this time i think it's like any pr creative process really so josh has given you a really simple and straightforward template and it's it, look you know i'm a literature teacher and a writer by background so for me it's that thing you know your introduction is about the who what where when and how and then but the way that you choose to format your video you know, you might do all sorts of funky things or different things and that's you and that's part of your creative process as well and the way that you show your work, I think there's, you know, is, is very much up to the individual. Um, yeah, another question, Sorry, another question I wanted to ask was about um, something that's come up a lot actually in these, the first sort of, you know, this is workshop four, so it's come up in each of the workshops we've had before, is about audience and you know, and I think it's a really interesting thing in this video space when you're giving a studio tool, but ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to capture an audience. So could you speak to that a bit? You know, how do you, how do you focus on yourself and your work, but at the same time make it for an audience? I guess coming from a journalism background, I would say the content is really important about um, what you're going to put in there. I would say Lee, get the basics in there. Get the who, what, where, when. Get it up front so people, when they click on your video, they know what's going on. They know who you are. They know where you are. They know what you're doing and what you're talking about. And once you've set that up and people understand what's happening and get a feel for you, then you can go crazy. You know, a whole bunch of perhaps still photos of all your art or, you know, however you want to engage. And there's a million ways to engage people with video. But I would suggest strongly that you really cover off those basics 
early so people understand what's going on. I, th I think you, with this type of stuff, you want to give clear information. But then I guess also with that creative side of it, we're dealing with creative spaces. So feel free to use time lapse, to use single photographs, to do quick pans to perhaps, you know, your pictures. There's so many ways you can be creative with film, as we all see every day when we go to the movies. Try stuff out and have fun with it. But there's, mm. at the end of the day, there's no rules. There's tricks and tips that will help and make it a lot easier to view and watch. As and I'll say them again: turn your phone on the side, <laughs> put it on the broom. But um, just do a few of those things. You'll notice a big difference in quality. And make sure your content covers off those basics at the start. Then you're free to really express yourself. Josh, um, Kay has asked, where does she find the time lapse on her iPhone? That's a good question. I'll have a look. I think it's, um, I'm just looking now. Camera. So it might not be depending on um, how new your iPhone is. Mine is just under when you're flicking through photo or video or slow-mo. And then there's yeah. time lapse there. It's to the far left, Kay. Um, so it's sort of, yeah, the far left one. I think, Harry, I would say now, and something that I probably didn't cover, the great thing about trying film and, you know, kind of really having a bash at it is digital has made it so easy and so mm. cheap you really have the time to just have a bash, see what happens, give everything a go, and it's all digital. So you can, you know, delete, throw it in your bin and yeah. try again. So it, yeah. it, I think that is a huge part of it really frees you up with this type of stuff. And it's made everything a lot easier. I mean, Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's, it's if, we've, if you've got a smartphone, it's right there and it's not going to cost you a fortune in film. Exactly. Um, Catherine Brennan asked, if you have to film yourself as you don't have anyone there to film for you, have you got any extra tips for that? Yeah, sure. So I would say, how can, what would be a good way to do it? I would still try and suggest to avoid the whole holding it at arm's different distance and talking. I would try and perhaps get your phone, put it on the broomstick, line up your shot where you're going to talk. So maybe have it back here, have a look how you're going to, where you're going to be and how you're going to speak. Press record, jump in front of it and talk. And Alter and Alternately, for those of you who are out there who are, uh, don't have someone at home to help film, you know, there might be a few of you and you might want to reach out to each other and you could, you know, film for your mates and they could film for you. Absolutely, that's a great idea and compare shots and... Yeah, exactly. And you can talk, you know, there's a whole new creative process for you. Um, Ian asked if there's a, if it's better to upload the video onto your website or just to add the link to the YouTube version. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand where he's... Yeah, I think, Ian, what you'll find is you'll get... A, so you're going to upload it to YouTube and then... Do you need a widget? <laughs> These funny words. You need a widget. Harriet, I talked to Harriet. I talked to Stacey, and I think the pro because I was wondering how you guys might be doing. We're going to use Streamyard, but for the future, for Ian's own website. Oh, his own website. Yeah. Well, he can put a. Hang on. It depends on the website and the website provider because they all have different ways of doing it. But you should be able to link to YouTube and embed a YouTube clip in your website. But it depends on how the website's set up. And I know that, like, um, different websites will do it differently. That's right. But you should be able to embed the video, embed a YouTube Yeah, video. you might need a widget or something, Ian, but you'll find that as you go along. What we'll be using for Portal is we'll be using a... A platform called StreamYard, so that means that we'll be able to upload your URL, and then that will then be fed out to Facebook, Instagram, etc. At the same time, I've got um, Catherine Brennan, the gorgeous Molly Vaughan, has uh, suggested that you name a date and time, and she'll come and visit you and help you out. So, 
Thank you, Molly, you darling thing. Um, oh, and Karen Steenberg and her partner's away, so she'd love someone to come and help her video, and she'd love to help someone else if they're interested. So I love that, everyone. I think that's fabulous. If you don't have the contacts of these people who are reaching out to you, please either email either myself or Stacey, and we will connect you, and we can get some, you know, video partnering going on. Okay, what else have I got? I've got um, Kaz saying is it, her WordPress site allows video via the media library in the back end. So for those, those of you who have WordPress, that's good to know. Um, yeah, I think as I scroll through, I think that's where we're at. Has anyone got any more questions right at this point in time? I'm gonna show you my face again. Um, has anyone got any more questions right at this time for, Ah, yes, thank you, Minerva, for reminding me. Um, Minerva wanted to just have a little bit more detail about editing. and okay. But firstly, I'll ask you, Renee, when do we need to get you the video? So what we're going to do, everyone, just and Josh, if you can just think a little bit more about editing and stuff, mm -hmm. Minerva, while I answer this. What we're doing, everyone, is we're focusing um, the weekend of August 8th and 9th um, right on the arts trail itself. So if you're a visual artist and that's that's the work that you'll be showcasing, then I would strongly suggest to you that you get those videos to us well before the 8th and 9th so that we can have it all ready to go so that we have a, a real virtual arts trail happening on that weekend. Um, we're, it's quite organic, I'm going to say this to you. So this is a, a moving feast. So when do you need to get the videos to us? You've got a few weeks at least. Like we don't have a close date on it, but the, the sooner you get it to us, the sooner it's going to be on portal and available for everyone to see. Uh, Minerva asked, how do you attach the uh, several different shots? Minerva, can I unmute you? You might want to ask that question. How do you attach several different shots at once? And I'm trying to, Minerva, I'm just trying to scroll, find you and I'm going to unmute you. Hmm. I'm in the wrong view, so bear with me, everyone, while I try to work out what's going on. I'm not seeing everyone, I'm sorry. Um, Minerva, there you are, my dear. I've unmuted you. Do you want to ask Josh what you were asking? Thank you very much. Hi, Harriet. How Hello. Just... Yes, I'm... Um, a little bit uh, more about how do you attach, like, the video of your lovely wife. Uh, she introduces herself and then she attaches and then she changes again, uh, it's like with a different shot, you know, this is my artwork, uh, this is what I'm doing. And then uh, even, and then she, she went straight to the view of the house, which is something, you know, more particular, what's inspire you. And um, can you tell me more about how can I make the editing uh, creative and nice too, and smooth that it makes it, they all work nice um, to look at it? Yeah, no problem. So, I guess it's kind of, there's two parts to it, Minerva. The part, the first part is getting your shots. So make sure you have shots of things that you want to show, okay? Mm -hmm. And then think of it as a process of getting those shots and lining them up in a row, okay? So you put the first shot you want people to see at the start. And then behind that, in line, you put the next shot you want to see and then in line, you put the next shot you want to see. So you line them up, and in iMovie, yep. it's it's easy to rearrange the shots as well. So once you pull them in, it'll you can put your finger on the shot on the screen. So you just pop your finger on the screen, and then yep. just drag it. You can drag it in front of another shot or behind another shot. So mm -hmm. even if you want to, you've taken all your shots and you've got them on your camera, you can pull them all in at the same time. And then what you can do is you can just spend time ordering them. So putting them in order. I like that shot first. I like this shot second and just moving them around with your finger. And it's as simple as that. Think of it as, it's best to think of it as your shots lined up in a row, like a set of dominoes. And you just put them in order of the way you want people to see them. And that's the best way to describe editing. And when you do it on iMovie, you have that option of just dragging and dropping with your finger on the screen where you want them to be. Does um, that help? Yes, thank you very much. No Minerva, problem. my dear, you're um, in Karen's, Karen Steinbergen is your local area coordinator. So, uh, actually Molly is. 
there you go. So Molly's your um, local area coordinator and she's saying that if you need any help, she's here too. And Karen has offered everyone in Fairhaven. Karen, where are you? Your Fairhaven Aries lawn? Anyway, Karen has offered to do the same for you and Pat has already jumped on and said, yes, please, Karen, I would love some help and she could come and help you as well. So that's wow. very lovely. What a wonderful <laughs> team. Thank you so much. I might have to have a film, you know, like a, a film festival or something at the end. Um, with all our new filmmakers. What you'll find, I think it's, uh, I'll, I'll say it again, because it's worth um, repeating, that once you get started, I think sometimes it's the hardest thing just to get started, but once you start taking shots, and it's the two-step process, it's the getting your shots and then editing them, but once you get started and playing around, what I think what you'll find is it's quite fun, because you can, you know, I like this shot, and I'll put that there, and suddenly the creativity really kicks in, and, you know, you're, watching Scorsese movies every night and um, things are going pear shaped But it's really good fun. Using digital is such a great way to go about it. And also, I'll say too, these things are extremely powerful. Steven Soderbergh, who did Ocean's Eleven, Aaron Brockovich, his last film that he shot, he used this actual model iPhone to shoot it. So... <laughs> Don't feel as though if you're just using your phone, somehow you're, you haven't got access to the best, best technology. This is top line stuff. So, yeah, good luck. Thank you very much. No problem. E everyone, I'm going to let um, Josh go now, but I will remind you, you have, so we're on Thursday, so you have six days to play around and to do your first your first sort of, you know, attempts at a studio tour and then come back and, talk and ask Josh, those nitty gritty questions that perhaps from here, when you don't have as much experience with it, that you, you know, that you can't, you're not yet aware of needing to ask. There's been a lot of really lovely offers from local area coordinators and things about going out and helping people to shoot. So please do reach out to them. And if you don't have their contacts, contact me or Stacey. And so, yeah, Kay, we're probably looking, as Josh said, you don't really want anything more, or if you're talking about putting little videos together, you don't want to, you know, your overall length to be longer than uh, three minutes. Kay, you're a writer, so I'm going to say to you, you know, like I would suggest, and Josh, you can contradict me, please do, but I'd suggest that you don't want to have, you know, just the way you don't want to have all of the same length sentences, you might want to play with the rhythm of your video in terms of the length of the individual shots you put together. But that's that's just what I would, you know... Harry, that's a great point. With editing, it has a lot to do with um, uh, rhythm. So, yeah, watch movies. That's another thing to really... It's, some people just love editing and you may notice the very... If you keep watching, you'll notice various rhythms in editing, you know, like a long shot, then bang, 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 three one-second shots. There's all sorts of things you can do. And um, yet again, it's just a matter of playing around and there's no, there's no rules. There's no... Mm. And, there's no one out there saying you can't do this, you can't do that. What I've presented here is just some basic tips to help you get get started and get an idea for how you might get the most out of your camera with very little equipment. Josh, can you show us yourself again? Well, um, yeah, sure, sorry. I was... are you, no, maybe you are being shown. I've done something, everyone, with my screen, so I don't really know what's going on. I just see lots of black squares. But, um, Josh, thank you so much. We've got really lovely feedback. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, people are inspired, you know, short, sharp, concise, you know, and it gives everyone a really great foundation, I think, to go away and spend the next few days playing with the, mater with the materials. And, um, you know, I hope that everyone who's got the time can join you next Wednesday at 2.30 for, for a tea station. Um, and as I said, we will be sending out the PDF and we'll have the video recorded so that you can go back to this. Cool. Um, if there's no more questions, though, Josh, I'll just thank you again. No worries, Harriet. Um, My pleasure. Um, it's great to have you. It's great to have so much. We've got such a wealth of talent in the Shire, so it's wonderful to be able to just reach out to people and say, hey, can you do this? So thank you. Everyone, we're really looking forward to seeing your videos. Do reach out to us if you've got any questions about other ways to be involved. Otherwise, we wish you a good night, and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks.